Welcome to the next video in our series on land administration. In this video, we're going to cover land tenure security and the three R's of tenure security. To begin, one of the goals of effective land administration is the provision of land tenure security. As we mentioned in previous videos, land tenure is how I hold my right. And my land right is what I can do with that land. If a land right is what can be done with the land, and a land tenure right is how it's held, then land tenure security is how strongly that right is held. Antonio Sevenbergen and Augustinus maintain that the degree of tenure security is an indicator of good land governance. The benefit of tenure security may include sustainable development and improved livelihoods, dispute resolution, reduced land conflict, improved land use planning, management of natural resources, and environmental protection. It also gives people more decision-making capacity and mobility. Land tenure security may be understood to reflect the certainty that land rights holders will be able to uphold their land rights in the face of challenges to those rights. In other words, the legal and practical ability to defend one's ownership, occupation, use of, and access to land from interference by any others. Such challenges often come in the form of land-based investments or projects such as agribusiness, mining, wind farms, irrigation projects, or they may even stem from increased urbanization, population pressure, and climate change. In the next slide, we see that without security of tenure, customary land rights holders are easily displaced by powerful elites. And in South Africa, due to the influence of col colonialism and apartheid, weak tenure security is associated with four main categories of land rights holders. One, farm laborers and farm dwellers with their families living on privately owned land. Two, people living on former mission stations. Three, people living in situations of insecure tenure in urban areas, such as informal settlements. And four, people living under customary tenure systems in the rural areas or of the former homelands or Bantu stands. Tenure security is difficult to measure, but some tools have been developed to assess it. Jenny Whittle, for example, has identified three aspects of land tenure security being acknowledgement by people, bringing legitimacy, acknowledgement by legislation, giving you legality, and acknowledgement of the influences of corruption, power struggles, and chaotic environments, giving you certainty. Legitimacy and legality are about the recognition of rights to land and protection of those rights, and both of these can improve certainty. Bear in mind, however, that these elements are not separate, but are interconnected. In our next slide, we see this very clearly in figure 18, which is a new continuum of land rights developed by Whittle. The three vertical axes identify tenure security according to an assessment of legality, legitimacy, and certainty. And at the base of the figure, we see that land tenure appears along a continuum from simplicity to complexity. And in the middle is the interaction. This model by Whittle considers the important reality that tenure does not remain static for individuals or households. In fact, people move between different tenure types and there are associated increases or decreases in tenure security. The model challenges all the assumptions that we've known that moving toward the right, toward freehold, title deeds, necessarily means you've got improved tenure security. Rather, the evidence has shown us that in many instances, once people have title, it can decrease the security of tenure because it exposes that land to the market when it's held as a means of raising collateral. In the next slide, we see the model developed by Tsimbizi. 
She identifies land tenure security for the rural poor in sub-Saharan Africa as an, as an emergent property of a land tenure system in terms of five interacting elements. People, social institutions, public institutions, land rights and restrictions, and landed information about the land. To go into detail, people is the individuals, communities, households, or any group that has an interest in land. The social or customary institutions reflect the social cultural norms, rules, and structures that regulate land relationships through allocation, recognition, protection, and enforcement of land rights. The public institutions refers to the statutory laws, policies, and guidelines for regulating land access and use, such as in a municipality. And in rural communities all across sub-Saharan Africa, social and public institutions may actually operate in parallel with different rules and requirements. The land rights and restrictions are acknowledged with respect to the continuum of land rights in which all the coexisting relationships to land are respected without any hierarchy concerning the degree of security. And lastly, land is the physical object to which tenure is tied, and the information about land is important from an administrative perspective. Just like Whittle's model, Simbizi's model recognizes that land tenure security is reliant on the interaction of many different stakeholders, including the need for balance between customary and statutory institutions. Finally, on this slide, we now look at the three R's, land rights, restrictions, and responsibilities. Having already discussed what we mean by land rights, meaning what can you do with the land? We must now introduce the siblings, restrictions and responsibilities. Have you ever heard the saying about how great with great power comes great responsibility? Well, the same principle can be applied to land rights. Restrictions influence what can and can't be done with land. Municipalities, for instance, impose zoning restrictions that specify that certain areas are to be used for residential, industrial, commercial, or agricultural land. Landowners are therefore restricted to using land for the specified purpose. You can't build a house in the middle of an industrial area, just like you can't build a factory or any other enterprise in the middle of the residential area without permission. Now looking at responsibilities, this refers to a social and ethical obligation towards sustainable development and responsible stewardship for the environment and community. You may have the right to build a factory in an industrially zoned area, but there is a big responsibility on you to make sure that the factory or business enterprise does not pollute the environment or bring harm to others. States equally have an obligation regarding land rights, and that is to respect, promote, protect, and fulfill people's land rights and access to, to land. And in South Africa, these obligations are clearly laid out in the Constitution. Well, that wraps up this video looking at land rights, responsibilities, restrictions, and other factors around land tenure security. And I do hope it's been very informative for you, and you should definitely stay tuned for the rest of the series as we go into bigger, as we delve into more detail.